So are we ready to go? Yes, sir. In a... uh, good morning, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Good morning. Sir, uh, Vakas, uh, could you please begin the session with the introduction of welcoming Professor Chagu, sir? Am I audible, Vakas? Yeah, yeah, you are audible, Jamsa, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Vakas, but the PPT is not visible. Please. Can you see the screen? Am I able to share the screen? No, no, Vakas, sir. Dr. Vakas, sir, we are unable to see your PPT. Hello? Dr. Vakas, we are, una we are unable to see your PPT. Could you please share again? It isn't even giving the option of sharing. Sorry for inconvenience. Please, please wait for oh, Otherwise, minutes. you know, I'll introduce myself. Not, not <laughs> no, sir, sir, sir. Please, please, please wait, sir. Wait. Please wait. So, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name, you know, that uh, Dr. Jabir Ali. I did my PhD from uh, AMU Aligarh. Um, not only PhD, from uh, 10 plus 2 to PhD. Uh, most of my education was from Aligarh. Uh, then I joined a number of organizations, worked with them uh, in the capacity of uh, researcher as well as uh, teacher. Uh, I work with GB Pan Institute in Allahabad, then I am Lucknow, uh, another institute in Lucknow, ICCMRT, then I was director in Manage Hyderabad. Uh, before joining, I am Jammu as professor in economics and business environment area. Uh, so I do teach courses uh, and also focus on research. Uh, so you know that uh, you know all the faculty members uh, need to also go for doing some research and uh, that's what I thought to you know share my experience in the domain of doing research in last 20 years I have been you know uh, publishing something or other uh, every year so I thought to share my experience uh, I know that this program is uh, uh, I think started uh, in uh, I think Monday uh, so this is the concluding day uh, you might have gone through all the you know, aspects of uh, writing a paper uh, or uh, doing research. So this particular this session will be more of, of uh, in, uh, in sharing the experience and uh, pitching on something. Uh, if everybody can mute, mute themselves, that will be good. Uh, and the echo will not come. So uh, the whole idea for this particular session is to uh, you know, putting everything on writing. Uh, so whatever you have learned in last, say, so many years of your experience, uh, many times we face the problem of writing a good research paper. So maybe I'll, I'll try to, you know, share my experience, my journey, uh, writing something every year, uh, and hope that you'll be having some kind of takeaways from that particular uh, experiences. Uh, so here I'm not a teacher of research methodology or like that. Uh, whatever I'll be talking, uh, that will be based on my own experiences. Uh, and I'll request all of you to, you know, come forward immediately if you have any doubt, uh, if you want to discuss anything. Uh, because uh, if you look at the research and uh, the whole system of 
conceptualizing a research problem to finally getting the paper published. Uh, uh, Satyakam, uh, sir, can you mute yourself? So, uh, you know, uh, all the researcher might be facing different problems. You know, some might, somebody might be facing problem in terms of, you know, starting writing something. Other may be pro facing problem in terms of doing the analysis. Somebody else may be facing the problem uh, in terms of writing the discussion part or other may be facing problem in terms of writing the conclusion and implication from the paper. So all may not be having the similar kind of, you know, say pain points. The difficulty of pain points varies across people. So kisi ka dukh jo hai start karne mein hoga, kisi ka dukh jo hai conclusion likhne mein hoga. So uh, I think this will be a good idea agar hum jo hai beech beech mein discuss kare and uh, try to you know uh, share your experience then i'll try to give my uh, say view on that and that will be helpful uh, to uh, do this session in next two two hours uh, in a very uh, in an effective manner so i'll request all of you to be you know active and um, put forward your questions uh, and uh, your views and discuss as much as you can so I'll just share my experience, you know, ex screen. I'll try to give you some insights so that it can be visible uh, and uh, we can have some discussion based on that. So I'll just share my, ex you know, screen. So please let me know if it's visible. Yes, sir, it is. Yes, I'll do one thing. I'll have another screen so that I can see who are all there in the platform. And that will maybe making the whole thing more interactive. So my screen in the show mode or not? Sir, it is visible. Okay. Visible, sir. Properly visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, fine. So here the whole idea agenda is, uh, you know, how to go about writing a good research paper. Um, and uh, the first thing is, uh, yes, uh, uh, research publication is very important. So I think you might have discussed uh, with uh, other colleagues as well, why this is becoming so important uh, in the domain of academics and uh, why you know uh, we need to really publish uh, something um, uh, on continuous basis. So this is one of the challenge uh, for academics uh, that you publish or perish. So if you're not publishing on continuous basis, maybe you will be facing problem uh, in terms of a number of things. Uh, the career development totally nowadays depends on, uh, you know, the publication uh, or continuous publication or quality publication. So one need to publish on continuous basis. There is no uh, other option now. And that is increasing over the time. If you look at the intensity of, uh, you know, requirement for publication, that is increasing over the years. Uh, and uh, many of the institutions now rather raising the bar even for the recruitment. Like, for example, in I am Lucknow, uh, in, uh, sorry, I am Jammu, um, we are not taking a faculty who is not having publication of B category and above. Uh, so even C category has been deleted. If you talk about I am Bengaluru, uh, they are just talking about FT50, means top 50 journals uh, reported by Financial Times. 
so the kind of bar which is uh, getting raised uh, also pushing us a lot in terms of publishing in quality journals so uh, here uh, the situation is becoming like this publish or perish if you're not publishing you can't sustain in academia another thing which is which i rather focus on, upon a lot uh, teaching versus research and uh, if you look at the teaching uh, you go to the class take a session and that is being consumed on a spot uh, but if you talk about research uh, research will remain in the domain for long time rather research make us eternal uh, whether you are here in this world or not your research papers will always be there in the domain and people might be citing those papers so if you look at here the sustainability in terms of the kind of content which you deliver uh, in your teaching versus in research uh, just look at uh, whether content will remain uh, uh, for long time in terms of teaching versus research which is more sustainable uh, so you'll find that research is actually making not only sustainable rather making eternal if you write a good paper that will be cited a lot uh, so you need to really look at that a good research paper make you live long rather make you eternal and that what i feel always that research paper means something uh, which will make you always uh, live um, but it is hard to publish because the rejection rates are very high and covid rather covid has uh, you know, changed the whole environment of uh, you can say review process uh, the dust rejection has gone off like anything at the moment i'm sure uh, those who are writing papers on continuous basis submitting papers for publication might have experienced this that covid has given one thing one good thing in in research that many many people who were not actually focusing on research earlier because of their engagement in other activities got a lot of time uh, to uh, finish their unfinished research and uh, because of that uh, you'll find uh, the queue in terms of the review processes has gone up like anything have you experienced these uh, uh, these thing in your uh, 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 you know have you experienced these uh, with you i have personally faced yeah so one thing you know uh, which has come up in a very good way particularly in domain of research because of covid is that many people have started writing and when you write you you know you become passionate about that and uh, then competition increases and then you know everybody think about writing so writing is easy you know you can write it very well only thing is that you need to concentrate on this so uh, fowl talked about this that writing is easy all you do is sit staring at a blank sheet of paper until drops of blood form on your or pour it and if you really concentrate on doing research you can do it very well and many of the researcher others you can say passive researcher Uh, because of the engagement in other activities during covid they started doing research and now they are doing a lot mm -hmm. so uh, you need to be passionate uh, for doing research and if you have the passion you can do it very well so research publication definitely that is very important but the issue comes how to really you know become a good researcher uh, what are the secrets of successful research and these points gives a very good insight uh, which has been uh, you know published in one of the journal in 2005 uh, that these are the steps to be followed uh, so uh, the first point is that what exactly uh, theme what theme to be uh, identified for doing research so a scholarly research is like a continue you know con you know contribution to a conversion a, co a conversation that means that it should be actually current uh, it should be ongoing so whatever topic you select that should have some relevance if it's not having relevance maybe that will not be taken up by the you know review process or by the editors uh, very nicely so try to find out some theme which has some relevance in today's world so that is the first thing which need to be done the next one is you must use and cite the current reference sources many times you might have gone uh, got the you know uh, 
uh, reviewers comment that the paper which you have cited that is old uh, you have not taken the recent one so it's always good to take the recent uh, you know papers ppt uh, presentation also just a you are not so audible can you can you uh, the ppt is still in the first slide sir ah that what i was just asking that whether it's visible or not let ah, me check first slide it is yeah it's okay sir so, uh, could you please put it in a slide show is it visible now visible sir but it is in the first it is slide. not in the um, slide show mode sir just a minute just a minute i'll i'll need to check why this is happening Okay. This. Uh, okay, sir. I hope this will work. Yes. Yeah. So I was talking about this. Why research publication? So I was just emphasizing on the point that you know, if we really want to uh, grow in academics, we need to publish. Otherwise, you know, the situation is like that: publish or perish. And then I was talking about the continuous publication, uh, and then also uh, teaching versus research. teaching is uh, say one stop consumption when you go and deliver uh, that is consumed but if you do research that will depend you know uh, for lifetime or you know it is uh, making you eternal then hard fact is that it's difficult so that's what i was discussing so this is uh, the point which i was highlighting that what are the secrets of successful research so five points to be taken into account while talking about doing research Uh, scholarly research is like uh, current uh, which is actually going on uh, so you select a topic uh, which is having some relevance in today's world uh, in that case uh, it will be appreciated by the editors by the reviewers and uh, you'll also be contributing in the domain uh, which will be applied which will become practical in nature uh, and uh, you need to use the current or research, recent recent uh, Uh, papers uh, while citing so that you can get the research gap which is current one uh, and that is what uh, many editors or many reviewers uh, point out while we submit the paper that the you no know, citation so the references which you have taken that is very old also this is important and critical to use meetings and conferences to develop opportunities uh, many times uh, when we Uh, do some research we say that no we should not share this with anyone uh, because otherwise it will be copied and pasted and uh, uh, our original research will be you know stolen uh, but the situation is now changed uh, nobody can steal your research uh, because uh, you know the system is becoming like that it has you know sometimes we feel that no it is electronic so it can be copied very well but at the same time now we do have different kind of softwares which checks the copy paste similarity level so i don't think that uh, you know uh, it will be copied by anyone rather uh, when you put into the electronic domain nobody can copy uh, but uh, it's always good to use meetings and conferences present your paper first uh, take some feedback from the uh, say experts and then revise your paper and submit to somewhere for publication so please use this uh, platform uh, this conferences and seminars uh, to get some insight unfortunately we use uh, this particular platform uh, just to fulfill the formula formalities or maybe uh, we want to visit different places so accordingly we submit the paper so that we can visit different cities uh, though we, during covid we couldn't go for uh, you know uh, physical conferences uh, most of the conferences have been online Uh, but this is a good opportunity which can be utilized uh, then next point is that is structure your research to optimize for quality research uh, this is very important every journal follow a style a structure and it is 
critical to understand those styles and structures uh, to write your paper good in, in a good way. So always try to uh, you know go through some of the papers of a particular journal, see what are the uh, patterns they follow in terms of writing the paper and accordingly you write. Develop a publication plan uh, for your research. This is very important that you know uh, we should have a pipeline. Uh, if you really want to publish a paper on continuous basis every year, you should have something uh, you know in your kitty. In that case, you need to have a pipeline um, because you are not sure uh, how much time uh, a review process will take for a particular paper. So, uh, if you have just one paper and you have put into the review, it may it may be published in say three months, maybe published in six months, one year, two years, or even more than that. So it's always good to have a pipeline, maintain that pipeline in such a way so that you can get the outcome uh, in terms of the review results uh, on continuous basis and you can have a paper or two every year. So many times uh, I used to track my scopus and see you know, in which particular year I don't have a paper. And I know in 2001, you know, 14, I don't have a paper listed and that actually gives me a lot of pain. Uh, though I started my first paper in 2000 and that got published in foreign trade review without any review, you know, uh, comments from the reviewers. Uh, but uh, in 2014, I don't have any paper listed in Scopus and that pains a lot. So, you know, uh, sometime, you know, uh, uh, that gives also a lot of energy uh, that every year we should write something. Uh, so that motivation, though it's not in our hand. I was having paper, you know, in some other places, uh, but that was not listed in Scopus. Uh, but I am not satisfied with the year of you know, 2014 because I don't have a paper in Scopus in 2014. Uh, likewise, uh, you know, uh, you also look at how many numbers you have. Though I don't focus on numbers, I always focus on quality. But it's good to maintain a pipeline. That what I'm. I just want to emphasize. Uh, another very important thing which I, ju I just want to uh, you know put before you uh, and ask this question uh, can you visualize your research outcome can you think that okay i have you know this topic in mind and uh, i just want to see my paper to be published in a particular journal have you visualized any time That this is my paper which I have conceptualized and um, I want to see this paper to be published in one of the journals, you know, which has been published by some leading publishers, say elsewhere, or Wiley or, you know, Emerald. Anyone? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, when we write any research paper, um, basically, then, uh, I mean, in my case, I, I see that it has come up very well and, you know, um, and the uh, maybe like uh, the layout of the paper is going to be very good and the data analysis is going to be uh, very interesting. Uh, basically, I think every researcher must be doing that, uh, yes. visualizing the research paper in the prospective journal. Yes. So, you know, like here, rather I'll say in this way, close your eyes, you know, and just see that how your paper is going to be published. And if you can see a journal which you, you know, oh, this is the journal which where my paper need to be. Uh, and just you, you know, uh, target that and achieve it. This actually gives two things. One is that you are confident that your paper is good. Another is that you have that motivation to see your paper getting published in a particular journal. Um, and you know that gives you a lot of energy so develop that capabilities to see your research outcome at the beginning itself because if you can visualize that nobody can stop you this is actually just to uh, it's a process of targeting your publication so this visualization capability to be developed that comes over the time 
when you write a paper you can always see that oh this is the kind of a structure which has come up uh, the you know uh, outcome of this particular research the findings of this particular research is really good this is also adding value because others have not done like this so i'll suggest all of you to actually focus on this try to see your paper you know visualize your paper to be published in a particular journal and just work on it. try to achieve that goal so look at this visualization is something which depends on the process research process how do you do all the things how do you focus on all the input which you have right so maybe focusing on that part is important if you can really you know visualize first and then focus on this research process that will add lot of value because this will give you kind of you know intensity you can put forward to achieve the visualization and that will definitely be converted into research output so as a researcher if you can visualize from the beginning itself that this this kind of output i want from the, from my efforts that will help you a lot right so anybody can uh, you know uh, can you also tell me like uh, anybody else can tell that, uh, what is your uh, view on this have you really thought about it i just got one response that was uh, really very interesting um, because uh, you know when uh, you write a paper and you don't have any target you know you can't achieve it this is just like you know setting the destination for your effort so this is the destination which you need to set and if you don't have the destination you don't know where to go then you'll not be able to reach the destination and this visualization totally depends on the research process which you follow one week we have already spent and then even more than that you have spent you might have attended many other programs as well yes your voice is yeah. not uh, sir sir so, so is it clear yeah yeah please go ahead yeah yeah so basically before as we start writing a paper before that we have to target a particular journal so that we can prepare accordingly and we should write in the same pattern with the pattern say that journal basically follows so that's basically what visualization stands for hmm. yeah yeah that is one thing uh, where you feel yes, you are just you know looking at the style of the journal uh, but the style is not the only thing which you will you know give you the destination that is yes that is one step to achieve the destination right? that you have already uh, you know targeted it and now you need to you know you have targeted but can you visualize based on the kind of content you have that yes this paper will be published in this channel okay right so i am just talking about that that yes you have targeted it you have something in mind but can you really look at the you know all the attributes of your paper and see yes this paper belongs to this okay okay sir thank you so um, i have some questions and maybe i can uh, take those uh, you know uh, take the responses from you uh, quickly uh, on some of the things uh, so the first one is the research title you know uh, whenever you select a research title why uh, you select that title what are the genesis behind selecting a particular research theme so what exactly you keep in mind while selecting the topic
सर टू गेट अटेंशन ओके हां सर टू मेक श्योर दैट आवर द टाइटल दैट आई हैव चूजन इज रिलेवेंट फॉर कंटेम्पररी सिचुएशन एंड सेकंड थिंग दैट इज माय रिसर्च पेपर और द कंटेंट्स ऑफ माय रिसर्च पेपर आर एक्चुअली रिफ्लेक्टिंग द टाइटल दैट आई हैव चूजन सो बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव दैट आई थिंक चूजिंग इन टाइटल दैट व्हाटएवर आई आई एम राइटिंग इन माय रिसर्च पेपर दैट शुड रिफ्लेक्ट ओके गुड So the title should also have the keywords mm -hmm. of the research, right? So no, my question is that why this topic? Like suppose you selected any topic. I am not. I know. Uh, maybe I'll be. I'll be sharing uh, some of the themes of mine and then discuss on that. But whenever you select a research title, you know, why you select that? What are the, you know, say, background or genesis behind that? सर यूजुअली इफ आफ्टर लिटरेचर रिव्यू इफ वी फाइंड दैट समथिंग इज मिसिंग एंड देयर इज समथिंग दैट वी कैन डू इन दैट दैट्स व्हाई वी सेलेक्ट दैट पर्टिकुलर टाइटल एंड देन नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज दैट इट शुड बी कैची okay so how the research problem come to your mind whether based on the literature review or something comes in your mind and then you do the literature review uh, sir both way both way right good so normally you find you know it's not that only literature review helps us i know sometimes something comes in our mind that oh this is the thing which i need to do you know i need to research and then you go to the google and then uh, you know try to adopt some other you know search techniques where you can get the professional papers try to get some papers and then you know based on that you uh, refine it and conceptualize your research problem right so while selecting a topic as i mentioned you know it should be concurrent temp you know contemporary it should be ongoing it should have some relevance you know maybe for academia or for uh, uh, say uh, practice so we try to you know attach so many things into that while selecting after selecting it how do we put the research questions and objective how do you identify the research gap because this so is the area study, where yes, you know, reviewers, reviewers comments a lot yes can you hear me sir yeah ha so prajakta yeah so how we find the research gap is uh, we select the title we select the direction of our uh, studies for the research and after that we minimum uh, study 25 to 50 different types of research papers published in various journals and out of those uh, observations and conclusions there will be a research gap which we will find so we will make a tabulated chart of those and then it will finalize our direction how to go ahead thank you sir okay. great very good so you know uh, it's always good to you know do something new right research means research you know so we always try to find out something which is missing in overall you know research domain so it's always good to select few leading papers of your theme which you have selected earlier and then look at that what exactly they have done and what new you can add into that if you can attach you know this refinement uh to your research problem that will add lot of value and maybe based on that then you can set your research questions and your research objective uh another thing is also very important which is actually attaching a theoretical basis of your proposed research uh if you can attach with some theory that will add lot of value uh, many times we don't uh, find uh, a theory which can prove your research but believe me it's not you know uh, restricting you not to go out of your domain you can go to any domain and find out whether this particular theory can be relevant to you or not so if you can attach some theory that will add lot of value i'll come to that point all those highlighted points i i i would be discussing little more 
Then sir, then, please speak loudly. I am not speak loudly. Difficult to. So I am not audible properly. Uh, it is it is fine from our side. I I don't know from. Uh, please check uh, recheck your uh, you know connectivity. Uh, professor is very much uh, audible for most of you. So please see. Yes, I you don't know, but uh, I am no. not able to hear properly. No, what what is the problem? This uh, can you tell me that problem? Then maybe I'll try to fix it. Voice is low or what? Problem yes, yeah, sir. Connectivity or speak problem? Speak a bit loud, sir, please. Oh, I am speaking quite loud, and that's why I'm just, you know, uh, asking. Is the problem is about the voice coming very less, or it's a problem about the connectivity? I don't know, so but your, your voice is coming, coming so open, less. Sir. Means, at least to me, I don't know why. Maybe the problem in my <laughs> connection or something. Yes, you can look at the, your connection. What is the problem? Speaker. Can you check your speaker and uh, your mic? Pardon? But can you check, uh, you know, the volume of yours, you know, uh, from your side, from your system? Yes, it is a full volume. Sometimes, due to network problem, these things may occur. Okay, so the okay. audible voice is totally audible. Might be possible okay. you are having a network issue. Okay, okay, maybe. I'm just thinking, looking at if I can fix a little bit. Okay, so uh, putting theoretical basis to your research, if you can add something that will definitely add value. Uh, the next issue comes about identification of the data requirement and uh, uh, some of the critical issues I'll try to discuss on that as well. Uh, that uh, uh, how to identify the data and the nature of data and then what kind of data to be used for analysis. Uh, then some tools and techniques. Uh, so I'll, I'll just highlight these research issues, you know, later on. The first point is, uh, you know, the selecting the key, uh, uh, the topic for the research and then what should be the ingredient in that. So maybe when selecting the topic, your topic should be smart. Uh, so this, this is being used, uh, you know, in many uh, domain uh, smart means specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time bound. So try to select a topic which is smart one that will work a lot. And the key tips for uh, you know uh, selecting the topic is uh, try to identify the topic uh, where you know uh, and the title which you actually set uh, should have the ingredients which can predict the content. Uh, so while writing the topic. You know, many times researcher, you know, this editor also says that write a topic in such a way it should not be, you know, reflected in the keyword. Keyword should be a little different than the topic itself so that it can have wider research, you know, uh, say, uh, uh, search. So the tips for writing the effective research title is it should have capacity to predict the content. What is there in this uh, should look interesting. It should also reflect the tone of your research. And uh, you should also put the important keywords into that so that it can be searchable. Uh, so uh, I'll also give some tips that, uh, you know, how many words should be there in a title. And then one thing which is very critical is that you should not have a repeat word in the title. You know? uh, also consider the scope of your topic. It should not be too broad. It should not be too narrow. Uh, many times you'll find even uh, the number of you know, characters to be in topic is also fixed by different journals. So you need to follow that those kind of patterns. Uh, while selecting the, you know, uh, theoretical model for your research, maybe you can use these steps to identify a good theory for you. Identify your key concepts, you know, evaluate and explain the relevant theories which are available. Show your research, uh, uh, so how your research fits into that and then, you know, you can use the comprehensive literature review to look at that. Let me tell you one story when uh, I was just uh, trying to find out, uh, you know, uh, uh, some literature to um, uh, 
understand the consumer behavior on uh, different product attributes uh, uh, for food items. Uh, so while doing that, uh, I found some of the theories. Uh, there was one theory which was very interesting was uh, uh, Lancaster's characteristics model, which was saying that uh, while consumer buy anything, uh, they don't buy the product per se, rather they buy the product because of the attributes in that. So whenever we, and that is very much applicable in any of the field. Uh, even if you buy a mobile phone, you buy the mobile phone, not because of the mobile phone per se, you buy because of the attributes in that. And then I tried to do some research on it and uh, found uh, those attributes have been categorized uh, very beautifully into three components. And those were actually uh, being categorized into three components like this. Let me set this writing part. So those were being, you know, uh, Lancaster's, Lancaster's characteristic model. They, uh, you know, some of the research were actually talking about attributes to be, you know, uh, categorized into three forms. Search. Experience and credence. So search attributes are those attributes which can be seen by the consumer and they can decide whether to buy the product or not. Experience are those which can be, you know, uh, say experience after consumption of the product and credence were those which cannot be seen by them. It is basically the quality or the any of the, you know, uh, engineering or uh, uh, any of the insight uh, attributes, uh, like say in case of food item, it is safety attributes or the health related attributes. So uh, while I was modeling this, uh, that uh, if we need to create a regulatory mechanism for food items and then looking at these characteristics, I tried to model this that in case of search, we don't need to have regulatory mechanism because consumer will decide whether to buy the product or not. In case of experience also, certain extent they can you know, uh, decide but in case, of, in case of credence attributes, they cannot decide. So that's why we need to have proper regulatory mechanism uh, to check the quality. So putting a theory in your research adds a lot of value. And you'll find those theories are available in different domains. You can just identify those and uh, include that in your research. Um, so many times you'll find we don't attach a theory. Uh, in our research and that's why the quality of the publication goes down like anything. So if you really want to have a good quality publication, try to attach some theory with your research. Uh, yes, uh, all research may not be uh, having this kind of uh, opportunity, but I'm sure if you'll do some, uh, uh, some literature, you go into deeper into it, maybe you can get some theory and you can attach it very well. So try to look at that part. That will help you a lot. Uh, any experience of uh, your, when you were talking about your research and trying to find out some theory and you, found, you face some difficulty in getting a theory and you know, putting the theory, uh, theoretical basis of your research? Uh, sir, I don't know whether it's really uh, related to it or not. Actually, there is a question from my side, mm -hmm. uh, which is connected with this statement. Uh, so, for example, uh, when we don't have literature reviews or a, a particular literature available for certain topic, mm -hmm. uh, for example, if during this COVID case, mm -hmm. uh, we tried to find out uh, uh, what are the factors impacting this uh, way, whether it's humidity, whether it's population density or uh, uh, something else mm -hmm. and uh, we were not able to find out the literatures available mm -hmm. in that case uh, how should we uh, move forward mm -hmm. okay uh, it you know now this is a very interesting question that uh, you know yes covid was not there right but there were you know so many other incidences and other risk or the fundamental risk you know uh, on which you can get some research, right? There were also diseases which were communicable, which occurred earlier as well, and there was some research on that as you know too. So it's not necessary that you just take only the research which is talking about COVID. 
you can take any of the risk incidents how the behavior of people like suppose i'm not sure whether you talk about behavior of people uh, on that or you are talking about that you know uh, say attributes or the key events which happens right but i'm sure if we attach uh, you know if you do some literature you related to the risk you know of similar kind maybe communicable diseases which occurred earlier like suppose even it, it that 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 couldn't occur in human that occurred in say plant or even animals that can also be you know evaluated so some kind of literature of that can add value and then then you build your own attributes your own factors your own indicators and then try to extend that research are you getting my point here yes sir so uh, you know it's not essential that only covid to be written in that even any other risk incidents and i'm sure there were number of other disease outbreak earlier as well where people face the similar kind of problem so attaching those events and then extending your research based on the new attributes or new factors can add value so in case of literature review you can get literature from anywhere there were many researchers we, we know uh, you'll find in in, in marketing they you know took a lot of literature from psychology while talking about consumer behavior they took a lot of you know uh, say even theoretical basis from sociology right so it depends on you how smartly you can scan the literature and attach some of the attributes of those researches mm -hmm. with your research and that can also give some kind of you know basis for making the theory which is multidisciplinary theory okay sir right yes okay let me give you uh, you know some of the uh, you know uh, themes which uh, recently recent themes of mine uh, you know uh, like you talked about covid i also uh, you know we tried to do something on covid as well and that paper got published in one of the wiley publication journal this was basically it's uh, you know impact of covid uh, pandemic on agriculture wholesale prices in india and uh, uh, a comparative analysis across phases of lockdown right so there were number of phases of lockdown the first phase to the second to the third right whether there were any difference in terms of the price change wholesale price change for agricultural commodities in mandis right and then we tried to take the data daily data of the prices of different commodities and then try to compare this uh, using a very basic basic statistical tools right say um, comparing the mean uh, price of different phases for different commodities and you know, it was yes it was being discussed a lot that because of the change, you know uh, lockdown the prices will go up like anything right this was our hypothesis and we tested that hypothesis and we found that it was not the case for wholesale market rather prices in the wholesale market gone down you know not increase because the you know institutional sales gone down like anything because most of the hotels were closed so they were not buying the wholesale you know vegetables and fruits so trying to find out something and which is ongoing uh and the paper which i got published is uh, quality certification versus the firm performance is there any relevance between the performance of a firm versus the you know certification and you'll find yes there may be because if the firm is really very sensitive about the quality you know certification you know or international quality certification it means that they want to improve their performance but you need to test those hypotheses based on the data and then you need to conclude uh the another paper was on factors affecting the consumers willingness to pay for health and wellness food products the another is on you know determinants of product innovation in food and agri business you know uh is small and medium enterprises so whether innovation happening across different size of the firms and that to product innovations talking about exploring the incidents of 
uh, you know entrepreneurial intention among females in em an emerging economy also talking about greenhouse gas like nowadays you know talking a lot about the you know emission so global disparities of greenhouse gas emission in agriculture sector so taking some of the themes which are important ongoing you know have lot of policy relevance and then uh, you know doing some empirical analysis on that and then you know uh, publishing that in some of the leading journals another thing which i always focus on that publishing in different journals uh, published by different publishers and targeting all those leading you know publishers globally you know say it's uh, elsewhere or wiley or you know sage or you know springer or like that okay so whenever you select a topic you know just look at how the topic will add value and how those topic will be welcomed by the you know editors and then by the reviewers nowadays situation is that editors reject immediately on the desk itself and we need to cross that one first and nowadays the desk rejection has gone up like anything you know that's also a good thing that rejection is being done within say a few weeks and then you can again uh, if you get some feedback you can incorporate that and resubmit but otherwise you know uh, after you know first stage at the moment after first stage i think the chances of getting through is very good uh, because when it is in the review process uh, it sustains maybe you'll get the uh, you know say major review and then the minor and then you know it will be accepted uh, so nowadays the even desk rejection uh, is something which is so high but at the same time that is also fruitful for the researchers because you get to know the decision very fast what is your experience right now in terms of dust rejection so anyone having any question about these themes sir may i ask a question yeah yeah please go ahead sir sir it is related to uh, desk review rejection mm -hmm. sir uh, many a times we write a paper and we submit to a journal and it takes a long time to uh, get that paper reviewed mm -hmm. so sir when i write a paper and submit it to an a journal that takes a long time so sir and after let's say 6 months or 1 year or 1.5 years i get to know sometimes that your paper is not suitable for our journal mm -hmm. so sir how should we uh, cope up with this situations like i submitted that paper to the, the journal and that journal says that you can't submit that paper to another journal why it is in review so yes. sir like if it, it does not get uh, uh, accepted so my time is wasted so how to cope up with this situations mm -hmm. if you could it's please throw some this very critical and i think nowadays uh, you know editors need to be sensitive and many editors are very sensitive about this Uh, they do appreciate the time uh, lag you know happens because of this uh, as per my experience all the leading journals all the good journals you know they don't hold the paper for long time they immediately give the decision if they don't like the paper and the paper is not suitable for publication because of the difference in the you know say scope of the you know say journal versus the theme of yours uh, they used to give the decision very fast uh, but in some cases maybe you know editors are uh, not so prompt uh, it's always good to you know check with the editor that you know please give me the you know if it's like suppose it has not gone out for the review right review process is not even under control with the editors uh, they do have a timeline and they do have a system to withdraw if they you know if the reviewer is not you know giving the review uh but i just focus on the desk part uh many leading publishers uh, many leading journals don't keep the paper for long time the editors immediately give the response you know they might be taking say two weeks or say three weeks like that and they will not hold more than three weeks if they are holding it still it is with editor you can check with editor because you know it's better to take the decision and you know get your paper back and then submit to someone else 
you know let me uh, you know share my experience uh, one of the very good journal uh, you know uh, and uh, topic was uh, exactly uh, related to the journal itself um, and uh, that paper was uh, with the editor uh, it was with the editor for about one month you know and then it was not going out for review so i was having the concern because i used to track my you know uh, this thing all the papers so it was not going for the review so i i just checked with the editor that this paper is you know is still with the you and it's not going for review so i'll appreciate if you can expedite the you know review process and uh, i was expecting that he will take the decision to send that paper for the review but instead of sending the paper for review he rejected the paper right so, and uh, he rejected the paper that it is not suiting the requirement uh, it was very surprising for me but because uh, the theme of the paper and then uh, also <laughs> you know uh, title of the journal was matching but still i welcome that because at least i got my paper back to submit somewhere else another thing which i tell you that i don't submit a paper to multiple journals at one time this is also something to be practiced don't be you know definitely every researcher have the anxiety but we should not really you know uh, do something which is not ethical right uh, it's always good to contact the editor and say that you know please let me know uh, your decision so that i can get the opportunity to submit my paper somewhere else uh, there are incidences i do appreciate that point because it happens but uh, don't uh, allow the editor to keep your paper for long time you know if it's going beyond a month just ask the editor please let me know so that i can get the opportunity to publish uh, you know submit this paper somewhere else right. uh, sir may i ask one you. question uh, yes. related to related to plagiarism mm -hmm. yeah please sir. go ahead sir like um, it's um, i went to one conference means it was the online conference and um, my paper got published in their book mm -hmm. so um, means uh, i was not aware of it and then i submitted the same paper into one journal and it got accepted there also mm -hmm. so now what should i do will it be counted in plagiarism or uh, is it okay mm -hmm. Uh, now here you know you discuss with your uh, uh, conference organizers right uh, because uh, you know you you might have not given the copyright you know uh, you have not you might have not signed the copyright agreement with the organizers of the conference right okay yes uh, so you discuss with them uh, because this is not correct unless they uh, you know uh, get the copyright signed they should not publish it anywhere uh, and uh, yes that is also important i think this is a good point which she has highlighted always you know uh, try to discuss with the conference organizers that you don't want to publish your paper in the proceedings or in uh, you know in any of the edited volume of the you know say uh, conference uh, if you are sure that you want to publish somewhere else as i mentioned in the beginning that what seven secrets are there Uh, this five secrets are there uh, conferences are to get some insight and then you know improve the quality of your paper so many times when i submit my paper uh, you know in a conference or present my paper in a conference i always ask them you know not to include anywhere because i don't want to publish my paper in your proceeding i just want to discuss my paper in your conference and many of the international conferences have that provision i i faced the similar kind of situation in one of the conference this was international conference and my paper was uh, you know uh, i presented that paper and it was there in the website of the you know uh, that particular conference i submitted that paper somewhere and then i got this similarity level uh, they said that this having some kind of you know uh, high similarity so please look at this uh, and then i found that that was uh, you know my paper only uh, the similarity was coming from there itself i discussed with the conference organizer and they immediately removed the link of that particular paper from the conference website and then everything was fine so it's always good to discuss with the conference organizer not to include your paper into the proceedings or anywhere uh, if you're sure that you want to publish that somewhere else now uh, what to do now what to do now means uh, it is accepted somewhere else also and they might have you discuss with them because you know otherwise it will become critical 
you can't but publish it, the paper you know two places unless you have the uh, you know rigorous editing and uh, you know change in the whole content you know so like suppose your theme is different and then also you have edited this uh, you know paper uh, and not having the similarity uh, with your uh, conference volume that will work so i'll suggest because you know that volume has already been published so it's good to edit this paper i know uh, properly and then i don't know because it's already accepted so i don't know what to do uh, with this but but sir, the publication was in the hard copy hard copy no, it is not matter whether it's a hard copy or soft copy right now everything will be in soft over the time right <coughs> so it's good to discuss with the you know say conference organizer that this is the situation how to handle this because if the similarity level is high both the paper have you know both the paper are same then you will face the difficulty mm. what type of difficulty sir <laughs> difficulty is critical right you know you can't have the you know same paper published two places mm. right. excuse me sir i have a question yeah Sir, I work in Delhi University colleges, and you know that for point system appointment of assistant professors, you know we need to have journals published in UGC KLS now, mm -hmm. the new list which has come up. Now I have submitted a paper six months back to one of the journals uh, in UGC KLS, and uh, they are taking time. Like the editor is saying that you know it will take. Uh, there's long queue, ma'am. It's a very good journal, but uh, he's saying that there's a long queue, and I've been waiting for the last six months to get my paper reviewed. Mm -hmm. so what should we do in this scenario? Uh, you know, uh, if you're sure that you know you want to publish in the same journal, you can continue with this. Otherwise, you can withdraw and you can you know submit in some other. Uh, I'll just give a tip. Uh, you know how to find a journal which can be faster and also quality journal. Just look at yes. the number of issues they publish. Right. Uh, those journals who are publishing, say, twelve issues in a in a year, they they do have very huge, you know, very very fast, rigorous, you know, review process. So even uh, you know, I review many papers of different journals. They used to give very short time, like say, fifteen days to a month, not more than that. Uh, so normally, the turn uh, in case of uh, say uh, journals which are say monthly basis or you know a faster. Uh, there are journals which are quarterly they take a lot of time there are journals who just go for buy you know uh, so two issues only in a year they take a lot of time uh, so those journals who are publishing say six issues they are also faster so always try to find out the you know avenue uh, which is having uh, more number of issues per year uh, normally their processes are you know faster uh, as compared to the others but if they are taking a lot of time, it's just UGC careless, which is not very, you know, high standard. It's better you take uh, the paper back and then submit somewhere else. Six months is very huge, you know, time uh, for the process. Maybe publication takes some time, but, uh, you know, completing the review process and giving the acceptance. Uh, nowadays, you know, all the journals are also competing. They used to give the number of days they take for different processes and they disclose everything that how many days they will take for the first review for this you know for the desk review and then how many days they will take for the final review right so after getting one review then then other things becomes uh, you know depends on you as well because like suppose there's a major uh, you know revision they will give some time if you submit faster they will again put into the review process so you know normally one year of time uh, you know it's a lead time uh, should be sufficient for uh, publishing a paper. Okay, Just discuss with the editor that they know because uh, the, uh, putting a paper uh, and suppose uh, you know that is based on some data and which which may become obsolete. Uh, it's good to discuss with the editor and uh, go ahead with something else. Uh, any other uh, question Thank on you. this? Otherwise, I'll discuss another very important issue that is, uh, you know, uh, always try to use quality literature review for your publications. Uh, because what I feel that uh, if you are using, uh, say, 
some of the references or citing some of the you know uh, papers which are not of good quality there are two kind of risk one is that you are encouraging the substandard research because normally the research quality is being determined based on the citations so it's always good to only use the papers which has been published in leading journals low quality papers if you are citing it means that you know your paper quality will also go down at the same time you are also encouraging you know the researcher who uh, you know published in a low quality journal so what i feel is garbage garbage in and garbage garbage out so if you use input which is substandard your output will also be substandard and many of the journals nowadays you might have seen that they immediately generate the reference list you know and they just you know uh, attach those references and their you know linkages uh, so they actually try to identify the quality of the reference which you have used uh, in your paper have you experienced this uh, all the papers which you submit in elsewhere they immediately you know uh, also evaluate the reference list anyone have tried to see that and uh, the, uh, evaluate that so whenever you go for a literature review please try to use the literature which is of good quality published in very good journals okay so i was asking that uh, you know have you uh, seen the list generated uh, after submission uh, about the reference by the general uh, you know uh, say uh, online submission system so like all the generals uh, you know of elsewhere when you submit uh, they also generate the reference list they just cross check the reference list and then generate you know another sheet uh, which talks about uh, whether there's a linkage or you know they rather they go for verification of the you know citations or verification of the reference list and then immediately they attach that reference which you have used in your paper uh, with the database and see that yes these are the papers have been published and already they are in different domains so they cross check so they have a verification system uh, that's online verification system that is being run by ai and immediately after submission they will cross check the whole list of your reference so i was just asking have you really you know seen that process no, of submission no sir not yet yes sir hmm? sir i saw that process once sir that when i submitted my paper to emerald mm -hmm. they they were cross checking the uh, references and in second instance uh, i published uh, in a journal that uh, asked me to <clears throat> cite their papers mm -hmm. that they were publishing so right. i felt some uh, like uh, it was like that they were promoting their journal uh -huh. <laughs> okay so th this is a very interesting thing uh, i know uh, sometime uh, we also feel that whenever you submit a paper you know to a particular journal you also try to uh, you know to ensure that your paper matches with their you know objective maybe some of the uh, papers signature. published in that particular journal to be quoted or referenced or cited so that will ensure that yes this similar kind of paper has been published right that is one thing another is like you know some of the uh, reviewers uh, definitely the review will go Uh, to those who have published similar kind of you know papers or have done research in a similar kind of domain so maybe those researchers will also say that okay you have gone for your literature review but you have not used these papers which is also important and you should also you know refer these papers uh, yes everybody is looking at you know recognition in terms of publication is coming based on citation so sometime it happens uh, but uh, my uh, you know uh, focus here in is little different i just want to emphasize that please use the quality papers 
you know for your citation and references uh, and uh, don't go for you know subgraded papers or the not good quality papers because when you know say subgraded paper is also being referred in your journal in your in your publication they get the citation and based on that they get the recognition and that is basically a kind of encouragement to uh, you know subgraded research sir uh, good morning sir uh, sir yeah. i am having a query like yeah. whenever we are citing a paper like as you know that there are two type of like take example of elsewhere i am citing certain paper of elsewhere mm -hmm. there are two category of papers are also there like subscription based and open is this mm -hmm. so from your point of view mm -hmm. like if uh, as you know that like the subscription based database is not easily available to each and every researcher so in that case if i cite some paper from open is this uh, like uh, database mm -hmm. so in that case that is having the equal weightage or the subscription based database journal they are having the weightage okay so uh, if we talk about you know a public publisher like elsewhere you know the quality of the paper you know journal is determined based on the citations and then impact factor right or the listing or indexing in the databases uh, let me make it very clear here is that these open get you know journals open access journals are not low graded low grade journals right many you know leading journals you'll find they open access basically talking about that you pay so that your paper is available to everyone and citation for this will be definitely high right so all these publishers really focus a lot you know to maintain the quality but yes uh, because researcher has not paid uh, for publishing the paper so biasness will not be there there can be some biasness in some of the publishers you know in open access um, i'm not sure about it uh, but impact factor if you look at and uh, the indexing after looking at the indexing for open access as well you can be sure that this quality is being checked and that is not low, low graded anyway sir another thing like i want to uh, clarify from you like uh, whenever we are publishing certain paper as you know that like in india basically like we are looking for ugc care or scopus but uh, some of the like journals those are like uh, under the publication house of elsewhere or emerald or trailer fences all the paper all the uh, like uh, you can tell that uh, journals they are not listed under your scopus but some of the university they are telling that the publisher name itself it is okay so in that case what is your suggestion no i don't think that they they will be saying that publisher name is okay uh, definitely the indexing is important right thank you thank you sir right indexing is important so like, you know, uh, if we we'll talk about i am jammu we are looking at abdc sir please uh, name some quality journals which which are having the fast publications in the field of agricultural economics agriculture economics you have all those journals no american journal of agriculture economics agriculture economics itself you know uh, so, i am asking for the fast publication name and quality to both Uh, sorry uh, can you repeat again sir i am asking uh, that please name some journals uh, which are having the fast publication and which are also the quality journals in the field of agricultural economics fast publication i couldn't get you um means <laughs> means they publish fast uh, within a one month or two months three months okay you are yeah. talking about the speed right? yeah uh speed depends on the number of issues they have right so you need to just check with the you know number of issues of different uh, journal and then again uh, if you look at agriculture economics all the journals are you know uh, the leading journals though they publish faster but the rigorousness is very high so normally they also have huge queues so i don't know that you know they cannot you know it takes uh, as i mentioned one year is you know you need to keep in mind you can't get publication before that one year you have to keep in mind to you know go through the review process yes, sir. sir i have a doubt 
-hmm. if you are having if you are not having so, so many references can we can we use some reports for references you can always use report not a problem you know but uh, is it you know, it's always good to if have we are using local yeah yeah local uh, means it's always good to use the reference from the journals you know uh, quality papers uh, or the good journals look at the reference list a lot. They do review that, that the kind of paper which you have cited. Uh, yes, you can also use some of the reports uh, and there are different kind of formatting, you know, uh, in the reference list, list itself that, uh, you know, what is style to be followed for a book, for a, you know, say a working paper, for a report, for a thesis. Uh, so it's not that, you know, there is no restriction that you should not uh, refer uh, these uh, you know sources you can refer very well uh, but i would always encourage you to refer the you know uh, publications of uh, good journals uh, in your reference list cite that uh, that will definitely uh, be welcomed uh, a lot by the reviewers as well as by the editors so uh, my emphasis here is uh, you know look at uh, the a reference uh, which you are using and look at the quality of it. Uh, maybe you can use uh, Mindley uh, to maintain your uh, uh, referencing. That will help you to prepare the catalog better. Uh, and uh, also, uh, this, there are functions where you know you can attach this uh, with your uh, paper itself, and directly you can you know prepare the reference list from that. So Mindley can be uh, a very good tool for. Uh, referencing and citation. Um, I'm not sure whether uh, any of you are using Mindley uh, for citation and referencing, but this is a very beautiful tool uh, which can be utilized while talking about literature review and, and talking about, uh, you know, uh, maintaining the, uh, say, citation and the reference list because the style of the reference list is very important. And uh, many a times you'll find that even a dot and a comma. Uh, need to be checked properly while talking about a particular style of referencing. So these three things to be remembered, uh, how to write a literature review, um, you know, uh, so how to extract the, you know, required content and put that into your paper. So how to write, um, you know, uh, this thing. So extract as per the requirement of your research and write in your words. Uh, and also, please avoid the plagiarism here, because uh, this is something which is very, very critical. Uh, while writing, uh, you know, or taking something, some insight from other paper, uh, you need to be very clear that you know how to start, uh, how to you know take the content from the previous researches. Uh, there are two ways to you know uh, take the content. One is where you write the name of the author first. You know, citation, uh, you start with the citation and then write something or uh, you put the name of the authors uh, at the end of the sentence, you know. So how do you uh, look at these two approaches? Uh, the first one, one is that where you write the, you know, uh, name of the, uh, say, author, like, say, uh, if I, I say this, Ali et al. And... 2021 then how do you approach it or when you put you know Ali at all at the end is there any uh, thumb rule for this in terms of writing the citation is starting citing in the beginning versus citing at the end yes sir difference is there yes first one has to be used when you start with the author name like they proposed something like that if we want to write mm -hmm. we have to use the first one if we want to put the author name at the end 
we have to put that in whole bracket mm -hmm. as difference okay but no i hear my concern is more about taking the content from a paper you know because normally when we refer a paper we try to you know take the you know say some of the idea from that particular paper and write that idea bring that idea to our paper right and this is where you know you'll get the similarity so whenever you extract the content from a particular paper you know, and write as such you'll have a lot of similarity so normally what happens when you take more idea from a particular author and try to put that in your paper in your paper you cite in the beginning right yeah, anyone want to say something okay so when you take uh, you know uh, say idea of my paper um and try to include in your paper and based on that you want to discuss maybe you'll start you know my name citation uh, of my name first and then you'll talk about argued or discuss or analyzed or you know maybe some connecting word you can use and then you can continue with the kind of idea which i have given in my paper and you know you build your research on this or maybe you know multiple authors have talked about something um and then you want to quote that and in that particular case maybe you will be citing at the end you know so these are the way through which we cite and then reference list you can always look at uh, you know general uh, requirement you know there may be multiple uh, you know say there are multiple uh, styles which are available and uh, different kind of publishers follow different styles so you need to check with the style which they follow and based on that the reference to be prepared and it's very critical that you prepare the reference strictly as per the style suggested by the publisher uh, so um, after you know finalizing the uh, say topic finalizing your uh, research theme uh, uh, this uh, literature review maybe you can identify the gaps and then set the tone of your research by putting the you know research objective hypothesis and framework uh, it is always good to finalize these in the beginning itself you know so finalize these issues before you move further in your research because this gives the base of your research and based on that then you can move forward uh, while talking about the data you need to look at the sources of data which you want to uh, the nature of the data you know uh, and uh, how to do an, the analysis i'm not going on that I rather i'll focus much on uh, you know uh, how to structure the paper better uh, is this for selecting the appropriate statistical tools uh, you know this is interesting uh, the first is to assess the type of data required for your research uh, type of data i mean here is you know uh, whether you know you are taking a secondary data or a primary data assess the nature of data required you know whether it's a discrete or continuous and then select the statistical methods uh, which you want to apply so whether you want to just use the sample technique of comparing the mean or you want to use you know some other techniques like say uh, looking at the causal relationship so going for techniques like regression model or so uh, so while selecting a technique you need to be clear that what is the nature of data like suppose say uh, mean you know you want to you know calculate the difference in mean now normally for calculating difference in mean we have number of tests you know we have t test we have anova but where to use the t test where to use the anova that depends on the nature of data and then type of data right so what we do normally uh, how do we select the t test versus the anova i'm sure you might be knowing it so in t test we compare means between uh, two groups of respondents uh, when we take two groups uh, whereas for anova we uh, whenever we want to compare means uh, for more than two groups then yeah. we use it yeah and while we know talking about the regression model what what are the key indicators through which we select the regression model 
So I think we uh, look at uh, the R square mm -hmm. uh, first. And uh, uh, once it is uh, satisfactory, then we move forward to look at the individual, uh, you know, p-values of independent variables and the uh, uh, beta, basically, standardized coefficients. I am just here, you know, trying to look at the type of regression model. Which type to select for different set of data? Sir, the objective of our research first. Okay. No, objective is to look at the causal relationship, right? To look at the determinants uh, you know, of something. So for looking at the determinants, uh, then you, you try to find out the causal relationship, right? But whether to apply the logistics or apply, you know, a linear. Sir, uh, two, three things uh, uh, we observe while applying any test. Uh, first, uh, uh, how many groups are there, uh, whether it's uh, uh, groups are there or not, independent, dependent. Second thing is uh, measurement scale that has been used. Uh, for example, in case of uh, 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 nominal ordinal, we will apply a different test, while uh, uh, for ratio, we will apply a different test. Uh, that's my understanding, sir. And sample size, of course. Right. So this nature of data, actually tells you that what regression model to be used and apart from that the nature of data of the dependent variable tells us which particular regression model to be used right so when we determine uh, decide which particular regression model to be used we look at the dependent variable first which is the data uh, what is the determinant variable and what is the nature of that determinant variable whether this is a continuous or it is discrete or it is, you know, say, uh, uh, ordinal, right? then how many options are there? So, like, suppose this is binary, right? We can use the binary logistics. If it's continuous, then you can't use the logistics. Right? So maybe you need to go for OLS. So this nature of dependent variable is very, very important to understand which particular type of regression model to be used. I'm sure you know about it. You know, whenever you go for any kind of regression model, just look at the dependent variable and then see what is the nature of that dependent variable, whether this is a continuous one or it is a discrete one. And then based on that, you select which regression model to be used. Anyone having any query on this, any doubt on this? Okay, otherwise let me, uh, you know, focus a little on this typical structure of an academic article. So the first is about the title, normally to be between say eight to 15 words. Uh, you can follow the style of the journal, you know, and see uh, what exactly a journal required in terms of writing the main title and also the subtitle. You know, sometimes you'll also get uh, that journal is asking you to write the subtitle as well, right? So just look at the style. Um, they also fix the number of characters required you know, for the titles and subtitles. Uh, so many times you'll find they always give some suggestion to you know, write the title. Uh, it should definitely be attractive to the you know, readers so that they get attracted about it. And it should be short, specific based on the restricted length of the targeted journal. So while writing the title, you know, it's also very important to write the title in a very, uh, you know, say, uh, beautiful manner and also don't repeat the title which is already published right so your title should also be different than others try to focus on that many times you also discuss that uh, whether the you know 
location name to be there in the paper or not, right? Um, we always struggle, struggle with that. Location name in the terms of like a, you know, we have done some research or some survey in Lucknow. So we are also writing Lucknow in the title, right? Or something which we have done in Delhi. So we write Delhi in the title or whether we should just write India or whether we should, you know, not even include the name of the country. Now, it totally depends on you, whether you want to focus on international audience or a national audience. If you're targeting national audience for your journal, you can write the city name as well, not a problem. But if you're targeting international audience, up to country is fine. But maybe many times people will not be interested to know about the city because here the research is basically, you know, most of the time we do the research to generalize that my research may be applicable to other areas as well. So putting this thing in the methodology part is okay, but it's not essential that we should put the city name as well and then India in the title. What do you think about it? Should we write city or not? Sir, I think uh, uh, mentioning the name of city or uh, region uh, will add something. For example, if uh, someone is going to review my paper and uh, he is interested to find out research gap. Mm -hmm. For example, I have conducted uh, uh, research in Delhi region or uh, uh, my research is focused on hospital sector. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, and uh, the other person is interested in uh, conducting research in hospitality sector mm -hmm. uh, or uh, in somewhere else for example uh, he is uh, sitting in afghanistan or uh, mm -hmm. uh, somewhere else so uh, he can quote my research paper that uh, this research has been done in india and uh, there is a research gap that uh, uh, it uh, such kind of research hasn't been done in uh, Afghanistan. So I'm doing this research. Mm -hmm. That's the benefit. If I mention uh, the uh, region oh, or yeah, you know, I, I am saying that, yes, you need to mention that, but whether that should be part of the title. Uh, sir, according to me, <clears throat> we can mention the name of the country in the title, but uh, adding the city's name would not be beneficial. You can obviously, you know, add it in your paper that this research has been conducted in so and so region, but uh, mentioning the name of the city in the title, I don't think so. It's feasible. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, just look at the audience. Like suppose you are select, you know, uh, targeting the audience of India only, and then writing the city name. Maybe it will work fine. It's okay. Uh, but if you are targeting an audience of international, you know. Uh, international audience then in that case maybe country can be fine and then you can put that into the methodology why i'm putting this because you know the words and the characters number of characters you know in the title itself uh, is you know we have limited scope because general uh, many times you'll also find that generals are asking you to reduce the content or reduce the words number of words in the total article itself because they don't have that much of a space right so space does matter so whether we should write or not, you know, uh, whether we should include city name in the paper, which you targeting, uh, you know, or trying to put that in the international agenda, maybe you can look at that. You know, if it's not essential to put the city name, you can just write, write the country name. Uh, many times even people are looking at not writing the country name, they're saying emerging market or emerging economy. And then in between you are writing, you know, uh, say, uh, country name uh, in the methodology part itself. So we, when we talk about the title, definitely we need to have a smart title and we should put in such a way so that it attracts the audience or the readers. Right? Uh, then while talking about abstract, you know, limits are already there in, in most of the generals. Uh, what to be highlighted while talking about the abstract is 
you know aim and purpose of your study the methodology used the key findings and implication so this should be the exactly you know uh, you can say the structure of your abstract there can also be you know structured of abstract like in case of emerald they already have given subtitles uh, to be written uh, and they also given the restriction of the words limit of the words uh, for each subtitles uh, you know, that is okay you can follow that even in some of the journals of uh, rotledge uh, we also have the structured uh, you know abstract but the whole idea of writing the abstract is that you should not write something which is not part of your paper uh, or part of your analysis uh, generic words or generic sentences to not to be given in your paper you should start with the specific objective followed by the methodology used the key findings of your research and then implication of that this should be the structure of your abstract not more than that many times we start with the story you know that india is facing this problem that problem and then you know this research or like that there's no need to write this specific issue you know those generic issues or generic sentences in the abstract you can just start with that we have tried to analyze this or you know some of the papers say that we should not write we rather research this paper you know addresses these issues and uh, this is the objective of this particular paper we have done following these methodology this is a collection of data and then tools followed for analyzing the data then the key findings and then implication of it uh, so we need to actually write the structure of the you know abstract like that keywords you know based on the journal again 5 to 8 whatever numbers have been fixed many journals you'll find this they have given 6 as the numbers no, maximum number of keywords to be given fix you know 6 there are also journals who have given the uh, you know uh, their own uh, you know keywords and you need to select from the drop box Uh, so you need to uh, just go through that normally they follow some kind of you know say listings uh, like jl and all like that uh, so uh, it's good to write the central concept and terms that arouse the you know interest of the readers and providing uh, you know it provides the link to your article uh, so a smart point will be that don't repeat the title words in your keywords right Like suppose something written in the title, maybe you can avoid that in the keywords. Why I'm saying that? Uh, because if somebody search searches your research, you know, you'll have better chance to get searched. You know, if you have multiple keywords, you know, digital marketing. If you look at somebody uh, might be having expertise in digital marketing. the whole idea of digital marketing is about keywords if you have maximum number of keywords you'll have better chance to get you know uh, immediately on the you know top uh, in your the google search uh, because you have given multiple keywords so here also because title is already having those words there is no point repeating those in the keywords as well so if you can have a better keywords additional keywords that will add value because then your paper will be searched immediately in the google or any search engine right so the whole idea of the title is to get searched you know um, and uh, that will improve if you have additional keywords you know which is not mentioned in the title itself right so it's always good to add you know keywords which is different than the you know say uh, title of the paper do you have any other view in terms of the setting keywords or identifying keywords for your paper and the next is introduction many times we face problem in terms of writing the introduction right what to do with the you know introduction how to start the paper so uh, what approach do you follow i follow approach which is you know uh, say um, 
reverse pyramid kind of thing. So normally I follow this way to write the introduction. We start with the larger issues, narrow down, narrow down and come to the point of my agenda. Right? So maybe a good way to write introduction is to start a broader view of the, you know, uh, say idea which you have talking about the international national you know regional and then talking about the you know a broad issue to the narrow issue so it's good to you know follow uh, you know a pattern like that literature review i already highlighted number of points while talking about the literature review you know so normally this is a typical uh, you know say structure of uh, a research paper you know we start with introduction then we write the literature review or conceptual framework you know it's always good to you know look at you know develop some conceptual framework for your research create some diagram you know and present your research framework in that so that will help you a lot so while talking about literature review, maybe assess the existing literature which are there. Try to always have the recent literature in your literature review. Try to identify the gaps uh, to be filled by your research. Um, many journals, you know, try to highlight on this point. You need to prove that your research is contributing in the knowledge base. Uh, give some theoretical basis to this. Attaching theoretical basis will add a lot of value. And then also examine the relevance of your methodology, you know, why you want to do this. Uh, maybe you can justify the methodology as well. Then you can go for, you know, setting your research objective hypothesis research question. Uh, many times we, you know, it is being asked whether we should have research hypothesis in all the questions, all the research papers. That is not necessary. But yes, research questions to be there. What exactly you want to do in your research that to be highlighted and that to be included. Then talking about data and the research methods, you highlight those points, make it very clear that what method you are following, you know, elaborate the technique, uh, you know, give, you know, uh, write this in such a way that the reader can understand the whole process of your methodology. Uh, many a times we don't write, you know, um, each and everything, you know, in a detail, and uh, we presume that because we have done it, so we know that how we have collected the data, how we have approached to the respondent, how we have avoided the you know biases in the research processes. We know that part, but reader may not be knowing it. We need to write those so that reader can know, reviewer can know. So that need to be you know highlighted in in your research uh, you know say data and research methods. So it should have been you know a lot of clarity to be there. Then results and discussions. Uh, many times you'll find uh, you know comments on this that results and discussions to be separate. So you have an additional challenge. Some of the journals say that no research, you know, results and discussion can go hand to hand. Now these two approaches are there to write your you know results and discussion part. Uh, in case of results, you can always present your data, uh, whatever analysis uh, you have done, uh, you know, try to interpret those. Um, uh, don't repeat the same thing which is there in the table, rather try to add something in that. Uh, in case of discussion here is that you need to also collaborate with other research which has been done earlier. So maybe, uh, you know, aligning your research finding with the earlier researches uh, to be part of the discussion. So uh, a smart way can be where you can write both the things together. But if a particular general says that, no, we want uh, these to be separate, then, uh, you know, accordingly, you need to adjust your writing. Uh, in that particular case, maybe you write the results and interpretations in the first section, and then you build a discussion based on the results 
uh, and you know corroborate you know say align that with the other researchers uh, which has been done uh, taking some citations from previous researches and then talking about the discussion part so that what need to be done uh, then we can come to the conclusion and implications of the research uh, conclusion is the brief find, you know of all the findings and the you know discussion and the implication is that how this research is going to add value to others it can be you know in, in, uh, applicable for different stakeholders some of the journals also ask a, a separate section to be written for the you know academia and also for the practice uh, so if that is the case or for the society so if that is the case maybe you need to segregate otherwise you can write all these three sections uh, in your implications uh, in one go uh, you can also write the, your limitations uh, within this and you can also change this heading conclusion you know implications and limitations of the research now here the whole challenge which is coming you know the reference style that to be followed the whole challenge is like here how do you maintain energy at all the levels of your research now you have different stages in research writing process how do you maintain the energy across this that is the most challenging part as a researcher i can appreciate this point you know uh, maybe i can be very aggressive very energetic while talking about abstract and introduction right and then doing literature review so that i can get some new idea right then doing the analysis yes i'll be having energy right writing the you know results and discussion maybe little less energy and then finally when reach up to the say conclusion and implications we lost everything and the you know interesting part is that when somebody read the paper they start here they just want to look at the conclusion and implications of your research to judge whether this paper is relevant worth taking adding value or not so this is very obvious that when you start something you'll have more energy and as you move ahead it's a race so in the race when you start racing you have the more energy but the finishing line by the time or the by you know time you reaches the finishing line you lost your energy you don't have that but what is important is the finishing line so as a researcher this is a kind of dilemma which we face always we have to overcome this problem so you can very much understand the structure of the paper you know analysis part of it discussion part and all but how to maintain the consistency how to maintain the energy across you know or how to reach out to the finishing line in a very professional and proper manner that what need to be focused upon right so maybe here you know by the time we reaches we reach on the results and discussion and conclusion and implication you know here our energy level goes down over the time so we need a boost here so that we can convert our paper you know for good journals what is your experience in the whole phase of writing the paper and maintaining the energy across Sir, hmm. sir, am I audible, sir? Yes, yes. Yeah. Sir, sir, I have one one question, sir, regarding like, sir, I have I have written a paper about TQM implementation and the analysis I uh, took was diagraph approach. 
mm-hmm. and we don't need uh, too many respondents for digraph approach we just need expert opinion and mm-hmm. you know the the experts in that particular field mine was in airline industry mm-hmm. so when i submitted the paper you know many of the uh, reviewers said that you know the sample size is very small Mm-hmm. but i don't know how how come they don't understand that in case of digraph approach i have mentioned a whole paragraph citing the previous studies where digraph approach was employed and and the number of respondents that were you know used but still they say that you know uh, the number of respondents is is very low so so how come the uh, the journal send, <coughs> send the paper to such uh, um, reviewers who, who don't have the understanding about that particular approach of analysis mm-hmm. Look, that is very disheartening for me because you know i have tried it so many times and either e- either of the two reviewer you know one reviewer accepts it you know he he says everything is good and fine and the other one says that the uh, sample size is too small so mm-hmm. is is luck also involved when we go for paper publication means uh, uh, okay that's good very good question i think uh, you know uh, uh, this uh, you know uh, dilemma uh, we always uh, fo- fa- faces you know face this dilemma uh, because when we talk about qualitative research you know normally that is based on the you know rigorous uh, you know discussion in depth discussion with few of the experts only uh, when we talk about quantitative research then we try to look at the sample size and you know because lot of tests are applied what i'll suggest here is that you just revisit your paper again try to emphasize little more on the methodology part right uh, just look at is there anything through which you can just convince in the methodology itself that your methodology is a naive methodology which is improved version of it you give the justification of using that methodology a little more right uh, and then after that the result and discussion part whatever interview has you have taken try to support this with the literature which is available right it doesn't matter whether you take from some other industry it's not essential that you take only you know airline industry you can take any other manufacturing industry or the service industry or operations based industry right which is totally driven by the operations i i perceive that you are talking about a paper which is operation based yes sir so it is tqm implementation yeah. total so, quality you know, management just look at those operation based you know uh, even uh, uh, papers and try to strengthen your result and discussion part based on that i i really feel that you know uh, people should not look at the sample size while talking about a qualitative research you now you need to communicate that this research is a qualitative one and then justify that you know based on the other researches though you have already sir, written some paragraph yes, you know. yes sir yes sir sir i have cited at least five to six studies which have been published in the same journal matlab this is the dilemma that those papers have been published in the same journals and mm-hmm. uh, still uh, <laughs> so it's very hello uh, awkward thing that you know they are not considering i am citing from the very same journal because because people say that you know you should you uh, write and read uh, the the journal before submitting to a particular journal its format and what type of Uh, formatting and everything how uh, uh, now here you know another another thing which you can do uh, like suppose you have already cited some of the papers and which has used similar methodology try to prove that the, whatever you have done that is the extension of that okay sir right because in what happens many generals you know just look at that what additional knowledge you know yes sir. you are trying to contribute through your research but sir, but, but sir, so one like that that particular methodology uh, you know uh, which was done in a particular sector to the another sector will not justify yes sir but, but if you can add something else in that you dip, give the contextual importance importance to your research right yes. and justify that you know whatever you are doing you are actually adding some more value than the previous one but so one reviewer accepts it and the other one says matlab uh-huh, it's, it's this not is, you know, this is part of the life 
right this happens so uh, here the whole idea is that maintain the energy across because time is running fast so i'll just you know uh, move uh, we always face this problem we start with lot of energy and uh, our energy goes down like anything by the end and uh, particularly our energy you know we uh, we have no energy when we write the conclusion and implication part of it and uh, you know we face problem because of this sir i think the same process is followed in uh, while doing a phd also we begin with josh but <laughs> in the middle we true. somewhere you know lose the track <laughs> true true same thing yeah definitely in in all the researches you know we we follow the, it, this kind of pattern comes you know beginning sir, maybe without, you know, uh, without guidance we cannot maintain the level of energy Yeah. So guidance is very important as far as research is concerned. Without proper guidance, how is it possible to maintain energy at all levels? Yes. True. True. So uh, we need to definitely find out some means and ways to maintain the energy across. You know, जैसे race है एक हमें race दौड़नी है starting में हमारे पास energy होती है लेकिन धीरे-धीरे धीरे energy कम होती जाती है जब finishing line पे जाते हैं तो energy नहीं रहती है हमको कहीं ना कहीं कुछ booster चाहिए right तो ऐसे ही हमें जो है गाइडेंस चाहिए या वी नीड टू हैव सम इनोवेटिव वे टू हैंडल दैट सिचुएशन और मे बी वी नीड अ ब्रेक यू नो अ लिटिल ब्रेक नॉट द हाई यू नो लॉन्ग ब्रेक बिकॉज लॉन्ग ब्रेक के साथ में क्या होता है कि बाय द टाइम अगेन यू री ज्वाइन एंड स्टार्ट राइटिंग द कंक्लूजन एंड इम्प्लीकेशन यू विल फील दैट नो नो वट एवर रिजल्ट एंड डिस्कशन इज देर दैट इज नॉट करेक्ट लेट मी हैव समथिंग एल्स sir i have a suggestion to enhance the research in our um, country why not why not people like you like the big professors you make some group on facebook or something some some forum like that where we can ask uh, questions from you in a group means why don't you form some group like professors like you and some other people they form I'm some group and then i think i think this is very interesting and uh, I, we should really go about this and hope that uh, national yeah. education policy yeah, uh, yeah. So, you know uh, buddy, uh, the buddy scholars or the, the people who are very much new the those who lack guidance and because of that uh, the lack of guidance they they are not able to maintain their energy throughout the paper so why means i i mean just i want to give this suggestion so that our research can be enhanced i think definitely uh, and in today's world when we have technology we have you know these kind of platform we can always do all these things right so it's a good uh, suggestion i think we should do it and there are a lot of researchers who really want to guide right who want to support budding researchers uh, so i'm sure that you know people will come forward it's a just you know uh, matter of creating the platform and uh, creating a forum there are several forums which are you know where discussions are happening and people are doing uh, you know a bit of it but yes it can be done in in a more organized manner and i hope that uh, national education policy talking about you know having the research foundation at the national level and then also having you know research foundation across different layers uh, still the you know whole the whole structure is being discussed and designed uh, because we do uh, want to have uh, you know a lot of research in this recently there was also one of the query from raj sabha that uh, you know how do we really encourage Uh, the publishing of the papers in national journals not only because here when we talk about national journals we don't have good quality of you know uh, you know national journals uh, because uh, everybody is talking about impact factor talking about indexing and indian journals are not indexed properly so you know there is no point submitting the pub, you know paper in that particular journal which is not being rated highly right so that was the query why we don't have uh, good journals in india and uh, people are publishing outside and uh, you know uh, we should encourage this part as well so it was very interesting question and it was very intelligent question which was been asked in ras sabha you know uh, i think in the last sitting so let me conclude you know uh, uh, the whole uh, you know discussion uh, while talking about uh, you know publishing at good place definitely the selecting the potential journal is important So it's always good to select the potential journal based on different criteria, and the first one is that uh, looking at the fit. Uh, so try to identify the fit of your paper with the journal which you are targeting. Uh, 
Um, and uh, you can also uh, look at based on the readership uh, that your uh, you know paper is uh, say local in nature so it's better to publish in a local journal in national level journal so that it can be recognized better so uh, these two criteria are uh, important to select the potential journal uh, after that also the reputation of the journal in terms of the indexing you know uh, so nowadays we are talking about general citation report, we are talking about ABDC, talking about ABS, Scopus, Shimago. So there are different databases which can be used for looking at which particular general to target uh, because quality does matter now. Uh, so we need to look at that part in a, in a very rigorous manner. You should also look at uh, selecting the good publishers uh, because uh, some minimum level of, you know, say quality is being maintained in case of publishers as well. Uh, maybe the general is new and not listed in databases at the moment or indexing at the moment, but definitely that will be listed immediately uh, in, you know, say a few, uh, say months or in, in a year or so. Uh, so publisher is also important. It's good to maintain uh, this uh, diversity in terms of publication. I always look at uh, you know that yes i have published one paper in emerald so now i should target another paper in you know wiley or something else uh, so having a diversity of publication uh, in different journals that definitely gives a lot of satisfaction so i think we should also follow that as well and finally uh, i would like to say that research can be learned so to be a good writer keep writing so many times we feel that no, I this is not my cup of tea. I cannot do research. You know, everybody can do it. Only thing is that you need to have patience in the beginning, and you know, continue uh, or um, keep writing. Master the requirement of your target general to reduce the tension and frustration. It's always good to do this in a, in the beginning itself. Though right now the you know situation is entirely different. The disrejections are so high, even sometimes I also get frustrated, you know, because of that. So uh, that's there. But uh, anyway, you need to uh, continue this. Uh, good writer is uh, also a need to be a good reader. So to continue, be, you know, to uh, so continue reading, uh, you know, uh, general papers, because that is important. Many times the reading of you know, reading general paper is boring, uh, but we don't have any other option. To improve your skill, uh, I think you should not work in isolation. I think somebody has given very good suggestion to, uh, you know, create different forums of discussion and so and so on. I think we should go for this. Uh, unfortunately, in case of universities, we do face a lot of problem in terms of, you know, uh, keeping researcher in isolation. Even they don't allow researcher to interact with other faculty member or other researchers as well in universities. So that is something un very unfortunate. Research is something where which need to be. Uh, discuss a lot with everyone uh, to get more idea. Uh, and it is important to accept the criticism. Uh, many times we get frustrated when we get the you know feedback from the reviewer. Uh, that reviewer has given very strange feedback and you feel that this is not really relevant at all with this. Uh, but anyway, we should welcome that and we should take those criticism in a good way uh, to improve the paper. And after improving the paper, you will feel that yes, this quality of the paper has gone up like anything. Learn to be mentored. Don't shy to seek the guidance. You know, many times we feel shy not to interact with others. It's important to, you know, interact with others. Uh, take the guidance as much as you can take from others. You know, uh, so that is uh, there. Develop the zeal for, you know, uh, creating your research impact. So if you have a zeal, I think, um, you know, nobody can stop you uh, from becoming a good researcher. You know, at this age, I still, you know, visit my scopus. Uh, I sometimes, you know, when I get a free time, I just search my authors, you know, this thing and uh, look at how many papers are listed, how many citations are there. You know, So I think uh, that is important. Uh, you need to have that kind of zeal to see your impression in the research domain. And uh, if you have that kind of, you know, say, uh, attitude that no i want to see myself in scopus i want to see myself in uh, you know uh, say uh, google scholar and i want to you know have so many citations um, 
I think you'll keep writing and you'll uh, you know do the quality research. So focus on quality versus quantity. You know, publish few, but publish in good journals. Because if you look at the face of the quality papers, uh, that gives you a lot of satisfaction. Like your paper is in Emerald, your paper is in Wiley, your paper is in you know elsewhere. You'll feel satisfied. Always you'll try to see that paper, right? Uh, but if your paper has been published in something where you know which you know it's very bad. you will not feel like seeing that so try to look at that part and uh, at the end i'll just uh, wish you all the best uh, publish and flourish and uh, become a good researcher publish good papers in good journals impactful journals and wish you all the very best so thank you very much and uh, we can have few quick questions you know i have not talked about anything related to the you know undertaking research there were some queries you know uh, how to apply the regression model or logistic regression uh, uh, i can just uh, you know uh, suggest that uh, while talking about the regression model just uh, first understand the uh, nature of your data uh, dependent variable and independent variable uh, dependent variable is the mean criteria to determine which particular regression model to apply Uh, suppose you are clear that your dependent variable is dichotomous you know uh, two options are there now you don't have any other uh, thought you can just go for binary regression binary logistics uh, but suppose your uh, particular you know uh, uh, dependent variable have three options you know low medium high and you want to model it so maybe you can go for multiple logistic regression uh, but if your data is continuous you know uh, then uh, you should not go for logistics you should go for oles or linear model or any exponential models uh, in case of logistics the beauty is that you need to only focus on the dependent variable independent can be in any nature it can be continuous it can be you know binary it can be dummy it can be you know uh, in rating scales you know so dependent variable in case of logistics can be in any form Uh, again you have multiple way to uh, assess the uh, findings whether you want to know the marginal effect or you want to know the order ratio uh, these two works better you know any uh, there is no issue at all but nowadays people are uh, seeing you know uh, asking for or many general even ask for not to uh, just uh, conclude based on the order ratio rather try to calculate the marginal effect of each of uh, every independent independent variable on dependent variable so these are some insights of regression uh, if you have any other query you can um, you know put be for me uh, i'll be happy to for that so i have to ask about the stratified sampling so my question is that uh, we make strata as on the basis of characteristics of our respondents so they are gender their educational level their caste or religion can we divide strata as on the basis of area also yeah means like we are working of some scheme and uh, we got the list of the respondents from the animal husbandry department and there were 200 uh, participants of those schemes and the scheme is distributed into the two tehsils of a district only in two tehsils of a district like in aligarh so i want uh, in case of you know uh, when we talk about stratification even uh, you know geographical uh, criteria is also one of the you know indicator to go, go for you know making the strata uh, but uh, this is actually you know normally we follow multi stage uh, you know, technique uh, so when we talk about uh, you know uh, creating strata based on the geographical reason uh, maybe the you know issue which you want to handle cannot be captured because the whole idea for making strata is to understand the variability in the sampling process Uh, so say livestock uh, and house household of livestock if you take uh, say district as an indicator of making the certification maybe then uh, say suppose holding of livestock or variability in holding of livestock uh, may not be captured right uh, so uh, district of aligarh versus district of bulandshahar or like that maybe having you know a similar kind of pattern so again the variability will be captured only when you go for deeper uh, you know level of uh, say stratum making 
so geographic can be one uh, criteria but that will not capture the variability of your uh, you know certification uh, participants uh, we are requesting to you to please uh, allow uh, professor jabir sir to leave the session because it's already too late and he has already a prior commitment to many uh, uh, you know his schedules are booked so whatever your question you can uh, you know directly talk to me we will arrange the thing the suitable answer from sir uh, dr wakas can you conclude the session if you are available it yes sir thank you Th thank you so much professor jabir ali sahab and uh, that was such a fruitful and a knowledgeable session and i hope and i hope all of us you know the budding researchers and the academicians will learn a lot and have a good idea about how to write a good research paper and hopefully you know we'll have much more interactions with you so that we can excel in our thank you so much professor jabir ali sahab thank you thank you very much all the best everyone thank you sir thank thanks a lot thanks a lot uh, we are about to start the next session within 2 or 3 minutes please take a pause take a break